Lulu, unsuccessful candidate for the Board of Supervisors, former, quote, man of power, now abandoned by all of my political and journalistic elite friends. One of them here who you know. You know, Dingman won't look at me. Oh, no? Mm -mm. You know how long I've known him? Since, Since night. Six, what? Since before there were cameras. No! <laughs> since, heck was a, since hell was a pup, as Grandpa would have said. Well, uh, Actually, since Grandpa was a Christian, he would have said when heck I, was a pup. I what? saw in one of the briefings uh, that you send out to the general public that he he attended your wedding. Oh, you read that thing? I, I glanced over it. You yeah, know. yeah, 67, yeah. But he doesn't like you anymore because you... Uh, the old they have big tits. <laughs> yeah, well... Did he say? I remember you said that he said, uh, "What would your mother think?" Right? He didn't say a fucking word. That was Herb, Herbert Gold. That fucking phony. Herbie Gold said, "What would your dad think?" I said, "My dad was going to kill me." He actually had a gun and was actually going to kill me. Well, that happens to the best of us. No, it's so true. Like, uh, uh, I bet you could. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Robert Blake. We discuss Robert Blake a lot, like you and I. I like Robert Blake. I love Robert Blake in that movie. I mean, I thought he was horrible in that stupid detective show, but well, he, he was I think immortal he, and in cold blood. He was against it, too. I think he thought Beretta was, he sold out, basically, to do Beretta. Yeah, well, that was about as sally out as the sally out he could be, homie. But in cold blood, and then also later on, Lost Highway was good. I despise Lost Highway. Was he in Lost Highway? Remember, he's the guy at the party that says, call me about your house. <laughs> the problem with the 80 <laughs> David Lynch film, except Blue Velvet, yeah. is that nothing, you can't locate anything. It's like saying, let's take some acid now and go back to that other acid trip we had five years ago when we were doing such a thing. Oh, look at that guy. There He's he an goes. asshole. He's an asshole. Well, he once wouldn't walk into the bank branch because I was standing too close to the door. He was a Hirschmanite. Is it because he's afraid of, of, of catching the COVID or just he doesn't like you? No, this is way, a year ago when I oh. first came out. as Two years ago when I came out as trans. I didn't even know his name. I just found out his name. He was a Hirschmanite who's now a Trumpist. Well, you now, know, have you... Remember when I said, I didn't mean it as an insult, but when I said I met millions of people like yourself? I didn't think that as an insult. I just took that as you being a braggart. That wasn't it. Oh, braggart, okay. Well, I didn't mean just the trans... Honey, thing. nobody is like me. I don't mean... You're you're unique, but I'm saying that uh, I, every kind of which way of any kind of person... Yeah, but you ain't met people like me. I really am what they say they are. No, I'm not saying you're not, but I just meant... I was a person with a fully formed female personality in a male bod, and only Rebecca saw it. Well, I just mean the homophobic side of life. What? It just seems that there's just been gay people. I'm not homophobic. No, not that you are, but I'm saying that there's, for me, there's just always been gay people. It's like saying I don't like trees or something. It's just everywhere. Oh, I yeah. never, yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean anything to me at all. Yeah, None yeah, of that. yeah. None of that ever meant anything to me at all. And when I got faggotized, yeah. all the faggotized, said, yeah, what about it, you know? Yeah. Well, you Big know, deal. I mean, you know, people uh, like uh, John Waters and Burroughs uh, and, well, your, and yourself uh, miss them days of being tranny faggots because it's like you're an outsider. But no, no. Look, the point is, the point is, and I can address this. OK, I did not know John Waters, but I knew Bill Burroughs. Oh, cool. Now, I know John Waters a little bit. I met him. Bill many Burroughs times, and so. John Waters were both something I never was, which were, shall we say, Habitual practicing homosexual. I was never that. Oh, okay. I'm bisexual, but I never was, quote, gay. Your never. version of, of being gay is like having a stamp collection. No, that's an <laughs> infamous line of mine. I once threw it up a person I said, who said, the person defined themselves themself by, you know, being gay. And I said, well, I used to collect stamps. There you go. See, Meaning, I was, was on to something. If you, oh, no, I think you're quoting me. I mean, basically... If yeah, but you're only going to define yourself by one thing, yeah. uh -oh. why not make it your stamp collection? Well, you never told me that, but I just picked it up out of your brain because uh, I have telepathy. But you know yeah. what? The, the, the co-star, the wind is coming, and I guess we'll, we'll call it cut here in a minute. But the co-star of this movie is that I Jeep. I commanded it to settle it. That Jeep is the co-star of this. What Jeep? I don't know much about cars, but you see right there it says Jeep. 
Do you have any thoughts on that car? Because that's well, like that was. You know what a Jeep originally was? No. It was a GP. It was a general purpose military vehicle built for the Army during World War II. See, that's a good way to end it because I would have had no clue about that. So. So we didn't really say anything substantial at all. The wind has stopped now. Why don't we continue? For okay, a go on. Go on. Okay, talking about Bill Burroughs. Yeah. Okay. You know, Bill Burroughs wrote a lot about homosexuality and he even had this book called Queer. Yeah. But I mean, the, the fact is, um, one doesn't really think of Bill Burroughs as a, as a homosexual writer the same way one does uh, Truman Capote. No. Or um, James Baldwin, even. The point is that as I get older, I. The, you know, you know, I'm not a great fan of Ginsburg, but when he said that Bill Burroughs was a satirist like Swift, that was right on the fucking money, man. I go back to Naked Lunch like constantly, constantly. I read constantly. it once uh, when I was living in North Hollywood on my 33rd birthday. I went to the North Hollywood Library and got a copy of uh, Naked Lunch and just read it in this uh, Lancashire and Victory right there. There so was it, a scandal in high school about it. Well, there's a lot of talk of it. It's even now if you read Naked Lunch, it's pretty out there. It didn't of lose. Course it is. That's the greatness <laughs> of it, man. It didn't lose its. Look, class. all of the classics. <laughs> what are you talking about? Pound's Cantos, or Breton's Love Poetry? Well, the or uh, Naked Lunch, or forget that matter, fucking Hamlet. The one thing is, as Pound says, news that stays news. Out there that stays out there. Yeah, it doesn't lose its intensity. But Act, that's the issue. Ectoplasm where, and teenage boys and bugs. It's the stuff dreams are made of. <laughs> you know. Clement? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, God. Um, All right, now. The two famous characters. See, this, that's an act of domestic terrorism having a cough these days. No. I was accused of that twice, by the way. Well, you know, uh, third the time's the charm. The police was called. <laughs> no, I have a recurrent cough, as everybody knows. Anyway. Yeah, yes. Uh, I, you don't, I, I'm okay with that. I take the Russian roulette approach to life. No, you take what Patchen said. you got to take the sluggy with the frizzou. Well, who wouldn't? Uh, anyway, I mean, the, the original point we were addressing here is, in fact, you have a situation now where um, the LG part of LGBTQ is totally part of the establishment now. Right. The B part is unrepresented as it always was. The T part are now the sexual rebels. And only the T part. But the whole question that comes but, down... But with people, let's say, I don't know, in their 20s at least, and teens, uh, being trans is actually quite, it's sort of trendy, or there's a lot of it. Oh yeah, a lot of people say that, and I'm all in favor of that. Yeah. Because, But I see it as a gigantic evolutionary change that's going on. I see it as a gigantic step in human evolution. And the fact that younger people would be coming out as trans is extremely uh, promising. But, um, I mean, there's still a lot of issues involved in all this. I things. personally, I think part of it, which is, you know, it's fine, right? But I think... We're still marginal, that's the point. I, I think, though, in the firstly, in the modern age, because of the nature of social media and the internet in general, and people being born in the machine in that way, yeah, I think some of it is just about the malleability of identity. And I don't, I suspect that not everybody that comes out as trans in the modern age sticks with it. It's more like trying no, out. But a, why should they? No, they shouldn't. They don't have to. But what I'm saying is, that I think it has a different. It has to do with just identity itself being Listen, malleable, as opposed to one, just, of, one of the 19th century socialists, and I don't want to quote a name because I don't think I have it right. All right. But it was either Engels or the Utopian Fourier said that under socialism you can be a gardener in the morning, compose a symphony in the afternoon, and um, do something having to do with whatever in the evening. I mean, the point I used is, to say that about San Francisco. I said you could smoke crack 